Dana White Contender Series 2024 Week 5. Let's get to these breakdowns. I'm going to break down all the videos. I'm Andy from wagertalk.com. If you could hit the like button, really helps me out with the algorithm. Leave a comment. If you don't have a great comment, just type the word tender. Tender, as in contender. All right, let's get into it here. Uh, we're going to start with a fight that is going to be pretty tough uh, to predict. Uh, Karini Lafarbos and Nicole Kalari. I believe that's how those names are pronounced. I'm going by what what I heard at weigh-ins uh, earlier today. I'm recording this on Monday, so I'm pronouncing these names based on what the the woman at uh, at weigh-ins said. Um, this fight this fight is kind of tough. Actually, I I'm going to start with um, Laura here. So this promotion, I, I you just can't really find that much film. Um, these some of these videos are blocked from in the U.S. Um, so I can't really find fight music show uh so i tried but can't really fight uh can't really find anything um losing to k hansen when k hansen was i believe 20 years old uh pretty bit pretty big of a red flag i was able to watch that now this was a long time ago surely she's gotten better she definitely looks a lot stronger and more powerful um that's not a great look here so um she has some wins uh, against fighters with winning records but again over there I'm not really sure. I'm not really, I'm not, I, I honestly, I'm really not sure what to make of her. I just haven't seen enough film to tell you I know what she's going to do or what her style is going to be. So I really don't have an opinion on her. And since this is a betting show, we don't like uncertainty. So I'm just going to tell you to kind of stay away from this one. Uh, here's what I know about La Farbo. So she uh, took a big time off. I believe she had a baby. Um, I did like her uh, last few fights. So this last fight she had against Jimenez, I'm pretty sure she took it easy on, on Jimenez. Like, it goes down as a triangle choke. She had this woman's arm completely in an arm bar. And I really think if she wanted to, she could have snapped it in half. And I think she was being really nice. Um, she looked very calm when she got the takedown. Uh, very good positioning. Very good power. Um, she turned it into a triangle, but I... My gut feeling is that she knew she could have really done some serious damage uh, to her opponent, and uh, she just didn't. Um, nice KO here against uh, Aubert, but man, Aubert was is terrible. So um, she, but credit to her, she got the knockout, absolutely flatlined Aubert. Really good uh, grappling and submission. I'm guessing we were going to see uh, some takedowns, some grappling, some wrestling. And this fight to try and go on the ground if you're uh, Lafrobos. Um, her four losses are really interesting. Manuel Fiora, who's obviously a title contender. Jamie Lynn Horth, UFC fighter. Jade Basad Wong, who is having success in uh, in bare knuckle. So her losses are to legit fighters. Um, this big break kind of worries me. We've seen some of these female fighters come back from having a baby. Sometimes they look great. And then other times they look really terrible. There's way too much uncertainty in this fight. I have no opinion. I think the odds kind of suggest that it's like minus 125. Um, for purposes of this video, because I know that there's people that like to watch this video after Contender Series is over. And if I get a pick wrong, point it out in the comment section, which, by the way, I need a name, a nickname for people like you. I'm going to pick Lafer and Bose. It is certainly not going to make the client card. It is not going to be a bet that I make with my own money. We move on. Uh, Tanzilov and Musasa. Um, I will start with Musasa here. This guy, he is violent. He's got some really violent finishes against some awful opponents, like downright laughable, awful opponents. However, kudos to him because he made no mistake that he was a much better fighter and the much more violent fighter. Um, I, this is important to note because it's very different from the guy he's facing. This guy's already fought three times uh, this year. Now, he's obliterated these guys. Uh, leg kicks look great. Striking looks great. I Yes, you could absolutely poke holes in who he's fought, um, but he did beat a 5-1 fighter and a 6-1 fighter. Um, the flying knee was great. Uh, it was... <laughs> Man, was that a brutal flying knee. He's very athletic. If you didn't see him at weigh-ins, shredded. Um, so I, he's a big underdog. And I got to tell you, I don't really understand why. I got a lot of holes in Tanzilov's game. Um, 
so t- so Tanzo is 26. Um, we haven't seen him in a while. Um, his last couple fights are really interesting because his fight against Eduardo Denise, he showed this like his striking looked really good, like really crisp jabs, um, really quick in and out of the pocket. But then he's holding his hands down at his, you know, at his side. And, you know, he didn't look like, I don't I say like professional, I guess. He does get the win in the third round. So kudos to him. But then this next fight, his opponent like takes him down and lays on top of him. Um, it's, I'm pretty sure it's tied going into the third round. And he's not looking, Tanzalov is not looking that good. And then his opponent gets tired. Tanzalov gets one takedown early in the round and just lays on him and gets the win. So I watched him have pretty good striking. I've seen him knock out guys with really good body work. And then I see him get tired. Like he got tired in this fight with the, with the grappling. Um, since we haven't seen him, you, you got a fighter that we haven't seen in a while. Where's a guy that's already fought three times this year. Um, Musasa doesn't have a ton of film out there, but at plus two ten, yeah, I think that's the way to play it. I'm I, the, like Tanzloff probably is the more complete fighter, um, but uh, at, at minus two seventy, no, I cannot put this in parlays or get to the window on this one. Um, I think Musasa's got some really really scary. KO power, and it wouldn't surprise me if he caught Tanzlov a little bit off guard. Now, could Tanzlov have been like really, really fine tuning his game and comes out looking great? Um, yeah, absolutely. But I'm not willing to pay this price to find that out. So, um, if you're looking for underdogs, sauces, I think you could do worse. Um, I do think though, the longer this fight goes, I think Tanzlov should pull away a little bit because Musasa seems to be a lot of explosion and not a, doesn't set up a strikes a lot. Cause he really hasn't had to. So Tanzlov probably is going to end up being the more technical guy, but as far as explosion, knockout power, finishing ability, uh, do not sleep on Musasa. I expect that to be a pretty fun fight. Uh, my guy, uh, Belgrui, uh, we loved him last uh, season of contender series. We talked about him, uh, when he fought Marco Tulio, and I thought that fight was great. I thought both guys looked fantastic. And what happens, Tulio, uh, as you know, guy, you know, he comes back. Um, he gets the, the the finish on uh, on Contender Series. And so I'm glad to see Buggery back. Um, Buggery goes in, um, like, really good performances. He didn't get credit, credit for this uh, finish, but he beat the you-know-what out of this guy. Buggery is long. These elbows are fantastic. He knows how to use his distance. Um, sometimes you see these really tall guys and they're awkward. Bulgari is not. Uh, Bulgari knows how to use his leg kicks. He knows how to use the jab. And if you shoot on him, he is ready to light you up with the elbows. So um, I love him. This is my most confident play on here. I know he's the best. I know he's a favorite. But in my defense, I mentioned how good I thought Bulgari looked uh, when he fought Marco uh, Tulio. So um, I... Don't really have a whole lot of great things um, to say uh, uh, for Iwasaki. He just doesn't throw a lot of volume, um, in 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 my opinion. Like his last two fights, he loses, and then this fight against Kim. Like, yeah, okay, he won, and you know Kim was kind of bloodied up, but there was a lot of moments of boring clinch work and control and it, he couldn't get him out of there. And Kim did not look like that great of a fighter. Um, I, I, he just doesn't really impress me. So, you know, this guy's seven and six, he goes to decision. Uh, Lovato is undefeated and he loses. And then look at, look at who he's beating a one and four, Oh, and a one and five, Oh, and one, Oh, and Oh, two and two, four and 12. I know you can't like, judge everything by the caliber of opponent but i just know like when it seems like he stepped up in competition he's lost and he struggled to finish a guy that i don't think is very good so um Belgarui is absolutely the pick this is a very interesting conversation here real quick about the over-unders the overs we've started i started playing more overs on this last ufc card it just feels like there's so much value on overs right now and that these fights that we really truly expect to not go the distance, they end up going the distance. I know a lot of people were on uh, the under and the main event on Contender Series last week. It just didn't happen. 
Um, I go to the Trevor Peak fight from Saturday. A lot of people thought that was going to go under. And it, these, these fights are just not. I do think the gloves have a lot to do with it. Feels like these power strikers, when they face each other, if it doesn't, or if, if there's not a finish in round one, it's just going the distance. For whatever reason, the knockout just doesn't seem to be there in rounds two and three at the rate um, that it has been. Submissions seem like they're being harder and harder to come by. I think the defense uh, is is getting much, much better as as time goes on. And so it's just harder to wrap up submissions on a lot of these guys. Honestly, rear naked choke has kind of become the one that, that, that you see. When was the last time like you saw an awesome like triangle from the guard in UFC? It just doesn't happen. I bring this up because I think Belgarui should finish. I know he's got the power. I know he's got the the striking and the elbows. But if this ends up getting clinched, um, I just I'm not ready to take some of these contender series guys by finish because we just see him end up going the distance. I, I, I go to Will Curry's fight. I would have I would have thought that was easily not going to go the distance. Goes the distance. So Belgari is the the pick. I just am not going to play him inside the distance. I, I just. I can't do it. If you if you want to if you're looking to play totals, it's overs, and you're looking for some really good over spots. On our UFC stream, we parlayed like three fights like to go over, and you know they hit. So um, it's Belgary, but I just caution I caution about trying to predict these fights to not go the distance because there's something in the water at UFC and Contender Series. Uh, Steel and Tani. Here's another one. Uh, Cody Steel is a big favorite. I don't agree with the odds. Uh, I think Tony has something for him. So Cody Steele is going to have relentless pressure forward. He's going to try and clinch. He's going to try and wrestle. And he does a really good job of that. The other thing that he does is he's really active. Like when he does get clinching control. So he ends up really tiring out his opponents. Um, he's got some really good finishes. Um, he's just, he's so active and he pushes forward and he just feels like a perfect fit for a contender series fight. So um, some really good finishes. Love seeing these finishes in like rounds three and two. Like I said, he will lean on you, make you defend, uh, wrestle you until you're so tired that you end up getting finished. So he has good striking. His pressure um, is, uh, you know what? I forgot to share the screen. Sorry, guys. So um, there we go. Okay. So uh, yeah, I love seeing these finishes in round three and round two. Um, this fight against, uh, Nico Echeverry, I thought was great. I thought, I thought it was one of his best performances, maybe his best performance, but he just, he's going to get you tired, man. Uh, if, 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 if you allow him to push forward and you get caught up against the fence and he just starts trying to ragdoll you, I, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Now, there's something about a Tony that I kind of like, um, first off, we haven't seen a Tony uh, since 2022. And I got to tell you, that man has put on some muscle. Uh, maybe he's taking the good vitamins. I don't know. But look at his physique today compared to uh, back then. Yikes. Um, so let's just get that out of the way. This man's going to be a lot more powerful than previous fights. Um, his striking is sneaky powerful i i say sneaky powerful because i see some of these some of his strikes they kind of come from nowhere and they don't look like they're that powerful but they just land in the right spots and he he could really do some damage it's a great submission win here um thought his performances uh in lfa and uh, samurai were really good don't be surprised if a tony's a really really tough out for steel and do not be surprised if a Tony has some moments on the feet. I'm not going to lay the juice on Cody steel at minus 200. It, it just doesn't, doesn't feel right. Tony's going to be taller, uh, absolutely taller. So steel, he's going to be able to push up against the fence, but he's going to have to be wrestling a much bigger body. So um, there's a lot of unknowns about a Tony. And we've seen some of these people that have fought in a while, come on contender series and they look great people without a lot of film. Uh, they've looked great. So I'm not getting to the window on Cody Steele. I'm guessing he's probably going to be a big time. Well, I'm guessing a lot of people are going to bet on him. Don't be surprised if a Tony really, really gives him a run uh, for the money. An upset win wouldn't surprise me. 
uh, at all. So, all right, we are getting to uh, the main event. Sterling and Latou, I want to tell you guys, uh, we have our 5% cross-port parlay of the week that is up. These have been our bread and butter, butter in 2024. They just have. Uh, last three months, we're 18 and 7, plus 26 units on these. We're up 151 units, all sports, in 2024. And these are just the hidden gem of, of our gambling world. All access clients know that when we put out these cross-port parlays, uh, it's hammer time. So if you haven't gotten one of these, highly encourage everyone to go grab that. I know it's college football season. I know it's NFL. I know we got UFC Noche. Get some of these plays that are in some of the other sports so you can build your bankroll and bring in these units. We've done it with sports that some people uh, aren't familiar with. And guess what? Now they love it when we do these cross-sport parlays in some of these other sports. So uh, I will tell you that there's there's a couple UFC plays involved along with another sport, uh, but there's no reason to not get this one. We're number one lifetime in cross-sport parlays, uh, 18 and 7. We've hit our last two 5% cross-sport parlays. Um, that's the big, that's the one that we're building our bankroll around this week. So encourage everyone uh, to get that over at wagertalk.com. All right. Good shot of Brian Power there. Uh, all right. Sterling and Latou calling for the upset. I am calling for the outright upset here. Um, steep price on Sterling at minus 260. Oh my gosh. Does this give me Will Curry vibes uh, from last week? Sterling, super muscular, looks the part. Um, he's only had four fights. And Sam Key is terrible. If you remember watching Sam Key in PFL, Sam Key is terrible. Um, he also beat uh, this guy. Here's my problem when I watch these fights. Sterling just doesn't quite look like, um, he just doesn't look like he's ready. He doesn't, um, he, I mean, he's, he, he, he looks really athletic, you know, given that. I think he needs more experience. His striking has good power. He just doesn't look that comfortable. He looks indecisive at, at like um, what he's going to do next or how to set something up. And he's benefited from beating up on, on some of these, some of these guys that are just not very good. And I think his indecisiveness is going to get him in trouble um, in this fight. And that's why I like Latou. Latou, when he gets in the ring, he is the alpha. And I think he's going to be the alpha in this one. And Sterling's going to end up being the beta. Uh, Latou is one of these just ultra tough, rugged, like you look at him with his shirt off and you're like, yeah, okay, tough guy, but I don't know. <laughs> this is like not ripped and shredded. And this is a guy that can take a punch, walk through a punch to deliver uh, punches of his own. Um, you see, he's got uh, his finishes. He can do it round three, done it round two. He's done it in round one. I think mentally he's just going to be tougher than Sterling. And as we saw in the Will Curry fight, Will Curry just, he just didn't have that it factor. Um, and Latou is not going to be scared of the moment. I think Latou is just going to look like the more experienced guy. And even though, uh, what is he, six and one MMA, he's got some kickboxing fights uh, on his record as well. I think Latou's toughness, it's just going to make Sterling feel really uncomfortable. And I don't think Sterling is going to get in a groove. And I don't think he's going to be able to get kind of the, I don't want to say the easy KOs, but yeah, I'll say easy KOs. Knocking out Sam Key isn't like, it's like, look at, look, look, at, look at Sam Key. Like this guy was getting, getting demolished by Watt Adams and Josh Silvera in, uh, in, um, in PFL, the only reason he didn't get uh, did get knocked out against Hamlet, I remember watching this fight because I had a bet. It was Hamlet hurt himself punching Key in the first round, like Hamlet like broke his hand or something. Um, so, like, so when I get this guy Sterling who could only get the finish in round three against Sam Key, uh, gigantic red flag. I I, I think Latou, I, I I think when that when that fight starts, you're gonna if you have a bet on Sterling, you're gonna be terrified about a minute into that fight when you see Latou feels comfortable and you see Sterling just not confident with what he's doing. I think he's going to make some mistakes on the feet. I think he's going to like, I, I, he may shoot at the wrong time and get caught. Um, he may like not get his timing right. I think the nerves 
get to Sterling because I just haven't liked his confidence level in in some of these fights. So um, this is a this is a wonky card here, guys. Uh, I I think this could be a, uh, an interesting one. You've got uh, you know these two women fighting. Lafer and Bose coming off a big layoff. Lari can't fight a whole lot of film. Uh, Tanzaloff has a fought in a while. Musasa three fights already this year. A lot of violent finishes. Tanzaloff. I've seen him gasp, but then I've seen him look great. Uh, strange there. Belgari is the only one that I feel confident. I know what to expect from him. It's going to be a long, like those long kicks, those long jabs, good elbows. If it gets in close, Cody Steele, and Tony, I, I know what Steele is going to try and do forward pressure, hold up against Spence. I think Tony's going to be ready for him. And I think he's going to clip Steele a couple times. And then Sterling, I just feel like, I just feel I, I, I didn't like his body language in, in some of those fights. And Latou is just not going to be intimidated by anybody, even, even at faceoffs. It was just like, Latou just looks like he's got that dog in him. So um, I think Latou at plus 200 is probably uh, the best underdog bet. Uh, Bilgari, you're obviously going to have to put that in a parlay with something, but I do like his chances to get the win. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it. Once again, if you could just hit the like button, it really helps the algorithm out. Leave a comment. Tell me who you like. Uh, if you don't have a great comment, just type the word tender. Uh, it helps me out. Uh, I always like reading the comments and responding to you guys. Thanks very much for joining us. Good luck on all your plays. Don't forget to get that 5% cross-sport parlay, and we will see everyone later.